So our world is broken and we're so aware of it right now more than ever because of what's going on in Israel. But luckily we have young people in our community who are gonna make it better. And tonight we welcome you to our confirmation service. We have four wonderful young people and they're gonna tell us what they're gonna to do to make the world better. We're gonna start with Oliver Crone, who's gonna tell us about the theme of the service. Our confirmation class has chosen. Our confirmation class has chosen social justice as the theme of this service. Social justice is quite a broad concept. The word justice suggests that there is an issue that needs to be settled or managed fairly. Outcomes reflect the standards of what public of what the public believes is morally correct, but different people have differing have different perspectives, interests, and values. Such differences can lead to loud social conflicts over what is fair or just. To settle matters of social justice, society is put in, up, is put in the position of judging itself. Jews have been considering issues of personal and social justice for thousands of years. Our understanding of what is just has been in constant revision since the days of Sarah and Abraham. Our confirmation class has inherited a tradition of questioning matters of societal and individual justice while finding inspiration in the efforts of our ancestors to implement the values of the Torah as they tackled issues in their own times. For our confirmation class, social justice is a matter of standing with those and for those who face injustice in our society. Today, Asian Americans are facing old prejudices related to the COVID pandemic. African Americans continue to face racism here. Latinos have been dehumanized by extremists in the media. Peace-loving Muslims are painted as jihadists. Women continue to confront harassment in the workplace. Today, our confirmation class stands in solidarity with all these groups. Historically, we as the Jewish people have ex faced extreme prejudice, and it is now our responsibility as Jews to help those, who, those facing prejudice now. We also have to reflect internally on our own prejudices. We hope that our service this, season, this evening will inspire you to all be activists of social justice, advocates for social, just, for social justice. Thank you, Oliver. And now our confirmation mothers are going to light the candles beginning with a prayer from Kara Gilman. Light is sown by the righteous, tucked into cracks in the sidewalks, dropped in the grass, breathed into the air, left waiting for others to find. You who are upright in heart, let your deeds declare your love. Let your hands be a source of healing. Let your joy be a fountain of blessing. Rejoice in righteousness and spread holiness throughout your days. Light is sown for you to magnify in service to God's holy name. As these candles give light to all who behold them, so may we give light to all who behold us as their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled light, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. Baruch Ata Adonai. אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר קידשנו במצוותיו וציוונו להדליק נר של יום טוב. We praise you, eternal God, sovereign of the universe. You hallow us with your mitzvot and command us to kindle the lights of the festival. Thank you. And now the couple of the fathers are going to lead us in the Kiddush, beginning with Avi. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם בורא פרי הגפן. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר בחר בנו מכל עם ורוממנו מכל לשון וקידשנו במצוותיו ותיתן לנו אדוני אלוהינו באהבה מועדים לשמחה חגים וזמנים לששון את יום חג השבועות הזה זמן מתן תורתנו מקרא קודש זכר ליציאת מצרים כי באנו בחרת ואותנו קידשת מכל העמים ומועדי קודשך בשמחה ובששון הנחלתנו ברוך אתה אדוני מקדש ישראל והזמנים okay. And Chris is going to translate that for us. Blessed is Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Blessed is Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe. You hallow us with your mitzvot and take delight in us. 
you have made the holy festival of Shavuot our heritage, the time of the giving of, of our Torah, a sacred occasion, a remembrance of the exodus from Egypt. God, you have chosen us and set us apart from all the peoples and given us the festivals, a time of joy and gladness. So it's a, it's a festival of Shavuot, which is when we hold our confirmation service. And it's a special time, a wonderful time. And the cantor is going to lead us in a Shechecha Yanu prayer. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shechecha Yanu Vekimanu Vehegianu Tazman Hazer And of course, that was a cantor and Barbara Sorotnik. And Noah Gilman is going to tell us why he's being confirmed. Ever since I can remember, I've had a rough idea of what my thoughts are on Judaism and religion in general. I've never taken the stories in the Torah literally or even understood why we study a lot of them. I've also struggled to understand why we study the Torah in general when it teaches us things like if a man lie with mankind as with womankind, both of them have committed a detestable act. Up until recently, these concerns have led me to distance myself from Judaism as I have felt like I more often see religion used to justify wrongful actions rather than good ones. However, with the help of confirmation, I've been able to understand that Reform Judaism isn't about believing every story or following every line in the Torah to a T. What I've learned is that Judaism is about interpreting the Torah in your own way and just being a good person. For example, during confirmation, we attended an online social justice academy where they taught us how Judaism connects to being a good person and fighting for what you think is right. The biggest takeaway I had from this academy was that there were many ways of interpreting Torah, many of which tell us to fight for what we believe in and push for social justice. One very relevant example of, it, of an issue that I believe Judaism tells us to fight for is people's right to abortion. During one of the sessions with the Social Justice Academy, I was able to learn about how the Torah and Jewish tradition teach us a liberal view of abortion, as Judaism does not believe that life begins at conception. In fact, the Talmud even teaches that up to until 40 days after conception, fetuses are just mere fluid. With pro-choice verses like these throughout Jewish tradition, it made it very clear to me that the Torah isn't just some old scripture that teaches us outdated ideas. Rather, through rabbinic interpretation, Judaism teaches us to fight for issues we believe in, like the right to an abortion. During confirmation, being able to discover Torah interpretations that speak to me has not only brought me closer to Judaism, but has become the reason I am being confirmed. Thank you, Noah. And Loa Lecha is from Pirkei Avot, from the Ethics of the Fathers, basically saying that we've got a lot of work to do and we can't do it all, but that's okay as long as we do what we can.
Anya is going to lead us in the Hatsi Kaddish. Yitkadav Yitkadashane Rabba, the Alma Divra Hirute, the Yam Lech Malkute, the Haye Hon Yom, the Hon Haye de Hobbit Israel, Bagala Bagala Udisman Karib, Bimuru Amen, the Heshme Rabba Mavara. Nalamu <laughs> Amen. Wonderful. Noah Lavi is now going to tell us why she's being confirmed. I was born in Israel, a Jewish state. According to the Jewish Virtual Library, on New Year's Eve 2020, Israel's population stood at 9,291,000. And the Jewish population in Israel in 2020 was 6,870,000 which makes for 73.9% of the population. So when I was growing up in Israel, there wasn't any reason for me to question being Jewish. I just was. So my parents were Jewish, my grandparents, friends and family and neighbors, everyone I knew, whether they were Israeli or not, was Jewish. I never had to question that I was Jewish. So when the time came, confirmation, without much thought to it, seemed like the next step to take. Hebrew school, my bit mitzvah, then confirmation. It just appeared to be the order of things, a natural transition, if you will. I didn't see a reason why not. In fact, I had more reason to do it. There were things I want to talk about that couldn't be brought up in casual conversation. So, since we'd been placed in quarantine in March, 2020, I didn't have much contact with my friends and other people in general, at least not nearly as much as I did before. Suddenly, uh, every day was the same and time was a haze with all this repetitiveness in my life. It was just a, such a wonderful escape being able to meet with people my age and talk about topics that sometimes are hard to bring up. Like, it's just like God and our obligations as Jews. Confirmation was an excellent opportunity for me to question why I choose to be Jewish because while the initial decision wasn't really a decision, we as Jews and as people must continue to choose Judaism. After attending several meetings of the Social Justice Academy, I was able to see why other people choose Judaism and what our moral obligations are as members of the Jewish community. Edmund Flegenheimer, better known as Edmund Flegg, wrote a book, wrote, wrote the book, Why I Am a Jew, in 1928. And at the end of it, Flegg wrote 12 statements that all begin in I am a Jew because, describing the reasons he is Jewish. Now he wrote some, he wrote some like, I am a Jew because in all places where there are tears and suffering, the Jew weeps. I am a Jew because the message of Israel is ancient and the most modern. I am a Jew because for Israel, man is not completed, men are completing him. In all these statements, I could not find myself. I think that each person has their own reason unique in one way or another that can only resemble that of others. I admire most about Judaism that despite everything, I can always make my own conclusions, my own opinions and question the texts and God. I admire the perseverance and I admire the community too. So at this point, I should tell you why I'm Jewish. I wish I could, but I am still figuring it out. I am doing so every day, whether I'm thinking about it or not. Everything that impacts me has to do with why I'm Jewish because it leads me to Judaism. I continue to search for the answer to that question. That's why I'm being confirmed. Thank you, Noah. And we now join the cantor in the Baruch Hu, the call to worship.
is going to lead us in the Ma'ariv Aravim, the prayer that acknowledges that God is the creator of our world. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bidvaro Ma'ariv Aravim, bechokma poteach shaharim, uvitvuna meshanei itim, umachlif at azmanim, umsadar at akhavim, bemishmerotayhem barakia kirtsono. Borei yom valayla, golel or mipnei choshech, vechoshech mipnei or, umavir yom umavi layla, ומבדיל בין יום ובין לילה. אדוני צבאות שמו, אל חי וקיים, תמיד ימלוך עלינו, ברוך, עלינו לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני, המעריף ערבים. And Noah has selected an interpretive version of that prayer. Uh, this is an interpretive uh, poem of the מעריף ערבים by Rabbi Regen Bernblatt. You mix the watercolors of the evening, like my son swishing his brush, until the waters are black with paint. The sky is streaked and dimming. The sun wheels over the horizon, like a glowing penny falling into its slot. Day is spent, and in its place, the changing moon, the splatter dash of stars across the sky's expanse. Every evening, we tell ourselves the old story. You cover our sins, forgiveness. Like a fleece blanket tucked on, around our ears. When we cry out, you will hear. Soothe my fear of life. Without enough light, rock me to sleep in the deepening, in the deepening dark. El chay vekayam tamidim lochalenu lolam vaed bochat adonai hamari varavim. Living and enduring God, you will reign over us always. Blessed are you, Adonai, who evens the evenings. Beautiful, and Anya is going to lead us in Ahavat Olam, the blessing that acknowledges that God, out of love, gave us the Torah. Ahavat Tolam bit Israel Lamcha Ahavta Tora Umitzvot, Kukim Mishpatim, Otano Le Madeta Alkena Dona Elohenu, Jorpeinu Uvekumenu, Nasir Behukeha, Bismach, but if I Tora Teha Uemitzvoteha, Leo Lamba. Yichen chayinu ve'orach yameinu ve'orach yameinu U'vachem nege yomam v'layla Ve'ahavatecha atasir mimenu le'olamim Baruch ata Adonai o'ev amo Yisrael And please join us in the Shema statement that God is one. Oh, yeah. 
Noah Gilman is going to lead us in the Vea Hafta. Yahavta e Adonai Elohecha beholavacha uhol nafshecha uhol meodecha vehayu hadvarim ha'ele asher anohi mitzacha hayom olivavecha v'shinantam levanecha v'dibar tabam v'shivtecha b'vetecha uvletecha v'aderech u'shokvecha u'kumecha. Ukshar tam layot al yadecha vehayu latot afod bene necha. Uktav tam al mezuzo beteka uvisha recha. Laman tiskeru vasi tem e kol mitzvotai vitem kedoshim lelochechem. Ani aronai elochechem. Asher hotze tiedchem eretz mitzrayim leot lachem lelohim. Ani aronai elochechem. Great. Oliver is now going to tell us why he's being confirmed. For me, confirmation is an affirmation of my commitment to upholding Jewish values. Coming into confirmation, I wasn't sure what to expect, as I was doing it as the next step in my Jewish education that my parents have set me on. My perception of what confirmation is gradually changed over the course of the confirmation process. Due to the pandemic, this confirmation class was forced to hold classes and meetings online. A large aspect of our online classes was the Social Justice Academy that was held over Zoom. In each Academy session, we tackled a new, a new topic of social justice. The issues covered in the sessions are very important to be aware of in the present times, and I have found them to be extremely compelling. I find myself to be very passionate about issues of social justice, and I find discussions of the issues at hand to be highly important as well as interesting. The issues I'm most passionate about are the immigration crisis at the border, people's right to health care, and the global climate crisis. In the academy sessions, the academy did a very good job of linking these issues of social justice to Judaism, which helped cement a long developing idea of what being a Jew is to me. Linking these issues to our Jewish values was great for me to better resonate with the concept of committing my of commitments to myself, of committing myself to being a Jew. Personally, I do not find the religious aspects of Judaism to resonate with me, but this doesn't deter me from committing myself to being a Jew, because for me, being a Jew in this confirmation is an obligation to uphold the important values that are central to our religion. This is why I'm being confirmed. Thank you, Noah. I mean, Noah, I'm sorry, you're Oliver. There's too many Noahs in the class. Um, so the, the Micha Mocha is a song of liberation. And of course, social justice is about making sure everyone is liberated. So please join us in joyously singing the Micha Mocha. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Sonia Peterson is going to tell us why she is being confirmed. Upon completing my button spa last year, I was left in an ambiguous state of limbo, not sure how to continue being involved in Temple Bethel's community or how to develop my Jewish identity that wasn't quite complete. My parents mentioned offhandedly that a portion of B'nai Mitzvah students go on to being confirmed, and to me, it seemed like the next logical step in my Jewish education. I wasn't particularly enthused at first, my main train of thought being, why not? But I had hoped that throughout the course of being confirmed, I would find a legitimate reason for the process. I wanted to say that I came out of this with a lesson learned and new insight gleaned. Now, I've always struggled with what I imagined God to be. The description of God in our prayers as the king of the universe, Melech HaOlam, did not resonate with me whatsoever. Every description of God that I've heard from others before, that God presents itself through nature, that God is a woman, that God set the universe in motion and watches over the world as events unfold, that God is unknowable, and especially that God is a large bearded man who resides in the clouds, felt alien. I even considered for a time that God was created out of nowhere by ancient leaders in order to unite a people under a common belief and purpose. In short, I wasn't connected to Judaism because I had no idea what God meant to me, and I was foolish for assuming I could find my answer in others. As countless conjectures swirled through my head, I contemplated a more spiritual approach of God as an invisible force that transcends space and time, and that is embedded in, in every single one of us. This felt closer to my truth, but I didn't quite like the idea of part of my identity being inauthentic, a part of this larger force I had no control over. Thanks to Rabbi Singer, however, I learned of another interpretation of what God could be during one incredible in-person session, characterized by delicious pizza, an unerasable whiteboard, and one poor deceased lizard we stumbled upon during cleanup. We listened to the names of God found in the Torah and our prayers and dove deeper into their meanings. Yute Vavhe especially caught my attention. The name is derived from haya, the verb to be. Suffice it to say, names are usually nouns and not verbs. So I tried thinking of how this sacred name being a verb applied to both myself and Judaism. If during prayer, an inspiring force calls us to action to follow the commandments, repair the world, welcome the stranger, help the poor, etc., God being a verb would make sense. It finally dawned on me that what I was missing in my interpretation of God is that it is the bridge that connects all facets of Judaism. Judaism is about kindness, compassion, understanding, leaving the world better than you found it. Judaism is about making a positive impact in this life, and God is the motivation behind it. I'm quite content to say I found my reason for being confirmed, and now understand that God is the driving force behind my passions to confront injustices and be the best person I can be. The connection. One moment. The connection between justice and Judaism was further fortified when we attended the Social Justice Academy with the Religious Accents, with the Religious Action Center, also known as the RAC, of Reform Judaism. This led me down a rabbit hole that planted me in the middle of the RAC Fellowship Program for Racial Justice. This is all preparing me for our upcoming trip to Washington, D.C. with the other confirmants for Le Taken to heal seminar where we will learn about the legislative process and lobby our representatives. Wonderful. Thank you, Anya. And Christine Morgan is going to introduce us to the Avot Fi'imahot, the beginning of the tefillah. Marge Piercy's poem, Amidah, is about turning to ritual to find a sense of continuity with her mother and grandmother. About it, she said, I have a strong sense of tradition. In Amidah, I have attempted to embody the past in us as we create the future. Bless what brought us through, the sea and fire. We are caught in history like whales in polar ice. Yet you have taught us to push against the walls, to reach out and pull each other along. To strive to find the way through if there is no way around. To go on to utter ourselves with every breath against the constriction of fear, to know ourselves as the body born from Abraham and Sarah, born out of rock and desert, 
We reach back through 200 arches of hips, long dust, carrying their memories inside us to live again in, life, in our life. Isaac and Rebecca, Rachel, Jacob, Leah. We say words shaped by ancient use, like steps worn into rock. And Oliver Crone is going to lead us in the tefillah. Adonai sefatai sefatai tiftav uvi yagid tehilatera Adonai sefatai sefatai tiftav Baru Hatadunai Elohe nu Velohe Avotenu Vimotenu Elohe Abraham Elohe Yitzhak Elohe Yaako Elohe Zara Elohe Rika Elohe Rahel Elohe Lea Ha'el ha'gadol ha'gibor v'hanorah el el yom Gomel ha'sadim tovim v'kone ha'ko V'zoher ha'zeah v'v'im ha'hod V'may b'gadolad v'v'nei v'nei hem l'man sh'mo v'ahava M'alech ho'zer u'moshiyah u'magen Baruch ha'tadonai Magen Avraham Lezrat Sara. Ata Kadosh, oh, Ata Gibor Le'olam Adonai, Mehage HaKol, Ata Grog Le'oshia, Morid HaTam. Mechachel Hayim Nehesed, Mehaye HaKol Baraham Rabi, Zolmech Nochlin Berothe Holim, O Matir Asuri, O Mekaye Amunato, Lishene Afa, Mihamo Hava, Yeburu, O Midomela, Malek Mimi, O Mekaye, O Matia Yeshua. Benamana Tala Hayot Haku, Baru Hatana Nai, Mehaye Haku. Ata Kadosh, Fishing Ha Kadosh, Utoshin the whole young, the Halagu Hasala, Baru Hatana Nai, Hail Hakadosh. Thank you, wonderful. And Oliver's father is going to read us a wonderful prayer. We cannot merely pray to God to end war, for the war world was made in such a way that we must find our own path of peace within ourselves and with our neighbor. We cannot merely pray to God to root out prejudice, for we already have eyes with which to see the good in all people if we would only use them rightly. We cannot merely pray to God to end starvation, for we already have the resources with which to feed the entire world if we would only use them wisely. We cannot merely pray to God to end despair, for we already have the power to clear away slums and to give hope if we would only use our power justly. We cannot merely pray to God to end disease, for we already have great minds with which to search out cures and healings if we would only use them constructively. Therefore, we pray instead for strength, determination, and willpower to do instead of merely to pray to become instead of merely to wish that our world may be safe and that our lives may be blessed. Thank you. Noah Lavi is going to lead us in the Hoda'ah, the prayer of thanksgiving. שבכל אנחנו חיינו שם מסורים בידיך, ועל נשמתנו הפקודות לך, ועל נפלאותיך וטובתיך שבכל עת, ערב ובבוקר, בצהריים. הטוב כי לא חלו רחמיך, ואמרכם כי לא תמו חסדיך, 
מעולם קיווינו לך. ועל כולם יתברך ויתרומם שמך, ומלכנו תמיד לעולם ועד. וכל הח... החיים יללו חסלה, ויללו את שמך באמת. אל ישועתנו ו... ועזרתנו סלה. ברוך אתה אדוני, וטוב שמך, ולך נאה להודות. Shalom, Rav HaYisrael Amecha Tassim La'olam Shalom, Rav HaYisrael Amecha Tassim La'olam Ki Ata And Kara Krohn is going to read a prayer for peace. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half truths, and superficial relationships so that you will live deep in your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people and the earth so that you will work for justice, equity, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer so you will reach out your hands to comfort them and change their pain into joy. And may God bless you you with a foolishness to think that you can make a difference in the world so you will do the things which others say cannot be done absolutely thank you now i'd like to ask people to think about someone or several people who need healing um you can put the names in the chat if you'd like or just hold them in your heart and we're going to offer a blessing misha barach for healing Saul Applebaum, Patty Podner, Diana Anderson, Peter Thorne, Kim Coe, Raul Camacho, Jack, Mel Jack Melman, Alex Pavita, Elsa Raineri, Richard Williams, Urshad Forgani, Jet Beeler, Lance Dumbo, Artine Samkian, Amy Vieira, Christy Patterson, Babette Cooper. And of course, we think of all those in the Middle East who are in the middle of this war, hope that it ends soon and that they can reach peace. Mark Vargas, Jean Kramer and Chuck Kramer. Myrna Barth. All those injured with and without medical care. Please join us in the Misha Baroth, the prayer for healing.
We are definitely so fortunate in this congregation to have so much talent. We're going to continue with the Torah service, and Anya is going to introduce it for us. Tonight we begin the Festival of Shavuot, a harvest festival that is also considered to be the time when we received the Ten Commandments. Accepting the Torah upon ourselves as confirmants makes Shavuot a perfect time to celebrate this coming-of-age ritual. The Ten Commandments are the basic guide for ethical living. In Kamohava Elohim, Madonai, Ven Kemaseha, Malhuteha, Malhut, Kol Olamim, Umshalteha, Behold Dovador, Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Imloch, Leolam, Vaed, Adonai Osle Amoitan, Adonai Varech at Amo Vashalom. Alpha Abraham in Haiti, Vavir Son Haed, Zion, Tivne Homot, Yerushalayim, Tivne Homot, Yerushalayim. Kiva ha levad batachnu melech el ravenisa adon olamim. Ki mitzion teze Torah. Ki mitzion teze Torah. O devar Adonai mirushalayim. Baruch enatan Torah, Torah. Baruch enatan Torah, Torah. La amo Yisrael bekedushato. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Kadosh Shema. God Lord Adonai Ti, Hune Rammem Hashemo Yachadav. Now, Olavi is going to do a Dvar Torah before we chant the verses from Torah. When I told my grandmother that I would be writing the Dvar Torah for this service, she told me she had the story for the occasion. One time when my grandparents, who are both Jewish, were on vacation and they walked into a church and in the church, they saw the Ten Commandments. So they asked the lady who, the lady who worked there, and she said that the Ten Commandments are pillars for a good society. There are so many unique things about the Ten Commandments. How could I possibly pick one thing to talk about for the Torah, you know? So I thought a lot, good and hard, and about what to tell you today. So the Ten Commandments, or in literal translation from Hebrew, the Ten Statements, are multidimensional and have many different aspects, besides often being described as a basis for a good society, as I did just moments ago, it is also a deep subject. It is noteworthy, it's a, the first noteworthy thing about these commandments is the very first one is not a commandment at all. In fact, it is more of a statement. I am the Lord, thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. There is no do or don't like, thou shalt not murder, honor thy mother and thy father. Instead, it is a statement. I talked with Rabbi about how to truly take these commandments to heart, one must first believe in God and God's power and authority. It is as if a disclaimer that to follow the Ten Commandments and truly internalize these values 
all people wishing to do so must understand and believe that the deny is the Lord thy God. The Ten Commandments are in no way the only necessary means for a good society, for a good, well-functioning society, but they are the pillars on which the pe people would build said society. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about some critical notes. The, first, the Ten Commandments come on two stone tablets. First, beside I, the I am God statement, we have don't have other gods beside me. Simple enough, right? Uh, followed by don't take God's name in vain, which is the last commandment to mention God. But then we have also connected to God the fourth commandment, which says you must keep Shabbat. All of these deal with people's connection with God, which, as I mentioned, is crucial in maintaining a strong, a strong connection with the Ten Commandments. But that doesn't mean these commandments don't benefit us and society. One example being commandment four, remember the Shabbat day and keep it holy. We are told to rest ourselves and allow our workers, cattle, and everyone in our household area to rest. This day of rest is an opportunity to reflect on one's week and even one's life. Rabbi and I talked about the importance of keeping Shabbat and its importance to balancing our lives. My mother also told me of a class she did with the younger kids at Temple Emanuel Redlands. She had them run and name things they do on a daily and or weekly basis. They mentioned chores and school and the whole ordeal. And when they stopped, they were tired and worn out. This is why the Shabbat is essential. It allows us to relax and release the tensions and stresses of the week. Commandments six through 10 say the following. Thou shall not murder. Thou shall not commit adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shall not covet anything that belongs to thy neighbor. So let me elaborate a little bit. Naturally, don't murder, don't kill others, good. Then be faithful to your lover, don't steal. Also simple, uh, the ninth commandment states that one is not to lie about others. And lastly, commandment 10 says that we are not to envy or want any something that belongs to others or is not ours. Some of these tie into one another. For example, if one covets, one is envious, one will steal. Don't envy, don't steal. Then there is commandment number five. Honor thy mother and thy father, thy father and thy mother. My Jewish learning talks about how some commentators speculate that the commandments range in a descending order from divine matters to human matters and within each group from higher to lower matters. But it is hard to determine so and it is hard for me to confirm so when each person's opinion may place a different one as the most important. The article also talks about how commandments one through four deal with human relationships with God. Commen commands six, six through 10 deal with humanity's relation to humanity. The fifth commandment, that of honoring one's parents, forms some sort of bridge between the two. But would we keep these commandments the same today? Are they still relevant to us nowadays? So the answer is yes. Why? They gasp, shocked. Well, I will tell you. <clears throat> today, in the state of California, that can be charged with as either a misdemeanor or a felony. Both of which aren't exactly good. Murder can result in a sentence of 25 to life without the responsibility of parole. Also, not good. So, and disrespecting one's parents is not punishable, but it is often frowned upon. It is a societal rule. Most are either societal rules, most of the commandments are either societal rules, which can, they can't be punished, but they're frowned upon by society or are crimes which are punishable by imprisonment, mandatory work, and others. So let me leave you with some food for thought, although you may have enough already. God gave the Ten Commandments to the people of Israel a very, 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 very long time ago. But things have changed. Society, what is acceptable in our society, the way we live, and so much more. So do you think that our pillars of society will change? Or if they are in order of importance, would that order change? Would commandments be taken off or added or are the pillars of society the same since the pillars of humanity are the same? Great, Noah, thank you.
ברוך אדוני המבורך לעולם ועד, ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר בחרבנו מכל העמים, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. אמן, אנוכי אדוני אלוהיך, אשר הוצאתיך מארץ מצרים מבית עבדים, לא יהיה לך אלוהים אחרים על פני, לא תעשה לך פסל וכל תמונה, אשר בשמיים ממול, ואשר בארץ מתחת, ואשר במים מתחת לארץ. לא תשתחווה להם ולא תעבדם, כי אנוכי אדוני אלוהיך אל קנה פוקד עוון אבות על בנים, על שילשים ועל ריבעים לשונאי, ועושה חסד לאלפים, לאוהבי ולשומרי מצוותי. לא תישא את שם אדוני אלוהיך לשווא, כי לא ינקה אדוני. את אשר יישא את שמו לשווא. זכור את יום השבת לקדשו, ששת ימים תעבוד, ועשית כל מלאכתך. ביום השביעי, שבת לאדוני אלוהיך, לא תעשה כל מלאכה אתה. ובנך ובתך, אבטך ואמתך ובהמתך, וגרך אשר בשעריך. כי ששת ימים עשה אדוני את השמיים ואת הארץ, את הים ואת כל אשר בם, וינח ביום השביעי. על כן, בירך אדוני את יום השבת ויקדשהו. כבד את אביה ואת אמה למען יאריכון ימיה על האדמה אשר אדוני אלוהיך נותן לה. לא תרצח, לא תנאף, לא תגנות, לא תענה בריאך עד שקר. לא תחמוד בית רעיה, לא תחמוד אשת רעיה, ועבדו ואמתו ושורו והמרון, וכל אשר לרעיה. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלא העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת והיה עולם נתן בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לפני בני ישראל על פי אדוני ביד משה. Our Haftorah is a story of Ruth. We read Ruth on Shavuot, the holiday commemorating the giving of the Torah, because Ruth is considered to be the first convert. The story begins with a Jewish man named Elimelech, who leaves his home in Judah, in today's southern Israel, because of a disastrous famine. Elimelech moves to the land of Moab with his wife Naomi and their two sons, Malon and Kilion. Elimelech dies and his sons marry Moabite women, despite the Torah forbidding such unions. The woman's names are Orpah and Ruth. The two couples lived in Moab for 10 years, then both of Naomi's sons die. When the famine is over, Naomi decides to return to the land of Judah. She tells her daughters-in-law to stay and find new husbands to provide for them. Orpah stays. Ruth, however, wants to go with Naomi to take care of her. By doing so, she affirms her connection to Judaism. 
Ruth and Naomi travel back to Judah together. They arrive during the barley harvest. Ruth goes to a field owned by a relative of Naomi's named Boaz, where Ruth gleans from the corners of his field. Boaz notices how dedicated Ruth is to taking care of her mother-in-law, and Boaz likes this about Ruth, as loving kindness, chesed, is a very important Jewish value. Because of this, Boaz decides to marry her, even though the Torah forbids Jews from burying Moabites. They have a son named Obed, who is the grandfather of King David. We will be reading from chapter one of the book of Ruth when Naomi tells her daughter-in-laws, or when Naomi tells her daughter-in-law to return to their home. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu, Melech Haolam Asher Bachar Bin Vim Tovim, Varatza Vidivrehem Hanet Marim Behemet, Baruch Ata Adonai, Habocher Batara Uv Moshe Avdov Yisrael Amo, Uvin Vie Haemet Vatzedek. Vatomer Naomi, Shov na vino tai, Lamate lach na imi, Haodli, Vanim bameai, Vehayu lachangem, La anashim, Shov na vino tai, Lake na, Kizakinti, Miot la ish ki, Amarti yeshli tikva. Gam hayiti halayla la ish, vagam yaladti vanim. Halahain tisaber nach, ad asher yigdalu. Halahain teagena, lavilti hayot la ish, albinotai. Kimarli mayod mi kem. Ki yatsa vi yaradonai. Vati sena kolan. Vati fkena od. Vati shach arpa lachamota. Verut davka ba. Vato omer. Hine shava yavim teh. Elama ve el eloheha. Shuvi acha. Re Yavim Teh Vatome Rut Altifke Evi Leaz Vech Lashuv Meaha Rayech Ki El Asher Telchi Eilech Uva Asher Talini Alin Amech Ami Ve lo hayech elohai, ba asher tamuti amut, v'sham ekaver ko, ya aser Adonai li, v'cho yosif ki hamavet, ya frid beni uveinech. Vate re ki mita metzet hi la lechet ita. Vate chdal da ber e leha. Vate lachna shete hem ad boana bet lachem. Baruchata Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, tzur kol haolamim, tzadik b'chol hadorot, ha'el ha'neman, ha'omer ve'oseh, ha'mdaber umkayim, she'kol devarav emet v'tzedek, al ha'torah ve'al ha'avodah, ve'al hanvi'im, ve'al yom hag ha'shevuot ha'zeh, Shena tatalanu Adonai Eloheinu lesason ul simcha lechavod ul tifaret al hakol Adonai Eloheinu anachnu modim lach umvarchim otach yitbarach simcha befi kolchai tamid leolam vaed. 
Baruch Ata Adonai, Mekadesh Israel Vehazmanim. Beautiful job, everybody. Beautiful. Uh, we're returning the Torah to the Ark. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Shalom, Hashivenu Adonai, Elecha Venashuva, Chadesh, Chadesh Amenu, Chadesh Amenu, Keke. I now want to thank all of the people who have made this confirmation service possible. Rabbi Singer, thank you for leading our entire class to where we are now. You've provided the best experience you possibly could have, considering we were stuck online the entire year. Your overall support has been incredible. Next, thank you to Kara Lee for being the best Milamedet anyone could ask for. We couldn't know, we wouldn't know how to chant anything up here without your dedication to record our portions and your enthusiastic phone calls to check up on us and our progress. Cantor Bob, thank you for being our cantor today. Your talent, energy, and spirit are contagious and you make this service all the more special. Barbara, we so appreciate your beautiful voice. It added so much to this experience. A huge thank you as well to Morris Maduro and Jory Yarmoff who did an incredible job with the music and editing today. Together, you've created a magical experience. Thank you also to our parents and siblings who have supported us throughout this entire process and to all attendees who showed up today. This confirmation would not be the same without everyone involved. So thank you all. And now I'd like to invite the parents to offer blessings to their children. May you live to see your world fulfilled. May your destiny be for worlds still to come and may you trust in generations past and yet to be. May your heart be filled with in intuition and your words be filled with insight. May songs of prayer of praise ever be upon your tongue and your vision be on a straight path before you. May your eyes shine with the light of holy words and your face reflect the brightness of the heavens. May your lips speak wisdom and your fulfillment be in righteousness, even as you ever yearn to hear the words of the holy ancient one of old. May your eyes shine with the light of Torah and your face be radiant as the brightness of the sky. May your lips speak words of wisdom and may the world you live in be the world of your dreams. May you see your world created in your lifetime. May you see your visions come to be. May your hope touch each generation to come. These are the prayers we have for you. May your eyes shine with the light of Torah and your face be radiant as the brightness of the sky. May your lips speak words of wisdom and may the world you live in be the world of your dreams. May you be blessed with understanding, with wisdom and compassion in your heart. May your tongue be filled with song and your lips sing out for justice. These are the prayers we have for you. May your eyes shine with the light of Torah and your face be radiant as the brightness of the sky. May your lips speak words of wisdom and may the world you live in be the world of your dreams. Thank you, parents.
I hope that all of you will look at the chat. And if you haven't, I'll, I'll make a copy for you because you've been getting incredible compliments. And I'm gonna channel Carol Lee for a moment. I'm so proud of you. You did such a fabulous job. You really all did. And it was definitely under the very most difficult circumstances this past year where we got to see each other only one, one or two times. My dear students, Anya, Noah, Oliver, and Noah, you are being confirmed at a time of great turmoil in our country and a terrifying war going on in Israel. So what words of wisdom do I have to offer you? I believe that the Torah that you so beautifully chanted tonight can offer a clue. You chanted the Ten Commandments because confirmation occurs on Shavuot, the holiday marking our receiving of the Torah. This moment in our history is deeply significant. As Rabbi Mel Gottlieb has written, it was a moment that gave us meaning and the charge to bring to the world a sublime message of ethics, morality, and the ingredients to make the world into a world of justice, peace, and love. Surely it was one of the most luminous events in human history. The world was never the same when our ancestors stood at the foot of the mountain and amidst thunder and lightning heard the words of the Ten Commandments. For our people, something revolutionary and irreversible happened there. From then on, we carried the Torah and the Torah carried us. We resisted all the chastisement, prejudice, hatred, and pogroms, persevered, and became a special people. Yes, it was our Torah at Sinai that defined our uniqueness. The Torah is our mandate to bring justice into this world, to repair our very broken world. You heard that call, which is why social justice is a the theme of your service tonight. Rabbi Gottlieb notes that the first commandment, as Noah discussed, is I am your God. But it's stated in the singular, even though God is addressing the whole community of Israel. This suggests that God was speaking to each and every Jew as a unique individual with a unique task to accomplish. To quote Rabbi Gottlieb again, each of us must trust the voice inside us which hears the voice or words in the Torah directed to him or her, and to follow that voice that calls. There are times that one individual can make an extraordinary difference. When one individual takes a radical step to shake others out of their lethargy, the times call for each of us to find his or her inner Sinai and to march forward as well. We are at a time of great crisis, as well as a time of great potential change. I trust that each one of you is going to make a significant contribution to our society, coming at it from the values that imbue our Torah. I look forward to watching this unfold in your lives as you journey from this Sinai moment into your most promising futures. And I also look forward to going to Washington with you next year. I know that you're all going to make a big difference. You're all going to make incredible contributions. And I can't wait to watch this unfold. And now the cantor and I would like to offer you the priestly blessing. May God bless you and keep you. Yair Adonai Hanav Elecha Bichonecha May God always be a shining presence in your lives, and may you all be kept safe. Yisaw Adonai Yisaw Adonai Hanav Elecha Yasem lecha, ve yasem lecha, ve yasem lecha, shalom, shalom, shalom. May 
God grant you the most special and wonderful gift of shalom, of peace. And shalom is connected to the word shalem, and that means wholeness. May you always be whole in your lives. Amen. We continue with the Aleinu. Aleinu le shabeach la dona ko la tekidu la le otsebre shit shelo asanu kiko yeharatzot velo samanu kimishpachot adama shelo samchel kenu kahem vegor aleinu kechol hamonam vanachnu korim umishtachavim umodim lifne melech malche hamlachim Hakadosh Baruch Hu Shehun Note Shamayim Veyoser Aretz Hu Moshe Vikaro Bashamayim Imal Hu Shkina Tuzo Hu Shkina Tuzo Pegaheimiromim Hu Eloheinu Einod Hememalkeinu Efezulato Kakatu betorato, Vyadata hayom, Vyadata hayom, Vyashevota eleva vecha. Ki Adonai hua Elohim, Bashamayim imal, Vyal haaretz, Vyal haaretz, Mitachat. Einod, Einod. Kagatu betorate haronai imloch lelam vaed. Pene mar vehaya adonai lemelech ala kol haaretz. Bayom ha'u, bayom ha'u, hiye Adonai echad. Hushemo, hushemo, hushemo echad. At this time of simcha, of joy, we take a moment to think of those who are no longer with us. May their memories be for a blessing. And we remember Anna Applebaum, Noah's grandmother. And if there's anybody you're thinking of this evening, whether you're in Shiva Shloshim, the first year of mourning or observing a yard site, please uh, put the name in the chat. Robert Slavin. Arnie Geller. Josephine Diamond, David Richards, Pat Constantini, Yaniv Dotan, Janine Lester, Dina Eliason, Julie Eliason, Julia Poveda, Casey McCarthy, Ethel Goodman, Heshi Glick, Eliud Martinez, Brenda Oppenheim, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Mardell Taylor, Ozell Waltman, I mean, I'm sorry, Ozell Walton, Walter Noon, and uh, we're not going to unmute for the uh, Mourners Cottage because there are a lot of people on, but uh, please, you know, recite it out loud and join me. Yikadal v'yikadash shemei rabah. V'yamad yivrach yechutei v'yamlich malchutei v'chayachonu v'yomechonu v'chayet echol beit Yisrael v'agala v'izman kari v'imru. Amen. Yehei shemei rabah mevarach le'alam u'almei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnase v'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shemei dekudusha v'richu Le'ela min kol birchata v'shirata, tushpachata v'nechemata, da amiran be'almav imru. Amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya, 
V'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. Ose shalom b'imramav, hu ya'ase shalom aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'imru. Amen. May the source of peace send peace to all who mourn and comfort to all who are bereaved. As together we say, Amen. And our closing song, very appropriately, is a song about peace in both Hebrew and Arabic. May it be so. Shalom, salam. May this be God's will that peace come to the Middle East. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We really appreciate your support and your participation. And I know how proud everyone is of our young people. Good night and have a great week. And if you'd like to stay on, by the way, we can sit and chat. <laughs>